Look at that. Jesus. Another oil refinery. I wonder how far we could get before they like send a little surveillance vehicle to see what the fuck we're doing. Do we mind? Do we care? How we get our energy and uh, how we, you know, and how we impact the environment in getting that energy, I think, is the issue of our times. And the Alberta oil sands represent, you know, the very worst in terms of our desire to extract oil. You know, basically go to any lengths to do it. My high knee is freezing. When people think of oil, they think of the Middle East. But actually, Canada has one of the largest petroleum deposits in the world. It's just that it's stuck in sand. The oil sands is an area the size of Florida, and it holds an estimated 1.7 to 2.5 trillion barrels of oil. However, until recently, it's been way too expensive to extract from the sand. It's the most difficult to access oil in the world, and that's why it's never been seen as a viable option in the global oil economy, but because the oil prices have gone up so much, likely because we've hit peak oil, all of a sudden the most difficult to access oil in the world has now become accessible. So peak oil is, I mean, it's very simple terms. It's, it's exactly what it says. It's like you hit a peak of production of, of available oil reserves. And once you've, once you've hit that peak, you start going down. So there are, it's, the reserves in the world are declining. Companies and, and countries are realizing strategically, they're trying to figure out where this oil is going to come from as uh, you know, sources elsewhere in the world dry up. So Canada is considered uh, a safe, secure source of oil. And all of the major oil companies, uh, all, all, all the multinationals in the world have operations in the, in the oil sand. And you're seeing that stampede to try and uh, ensure that uh, they get a piece of the pie. We made our way to Fort McMurray, a small town in the middle of Canada's tundra that is the epicenter of the oil sands operation. When we were there, we realized that this little town has global consequences. Fort McMurray is responsible for two thirds of Canada's contribution to global greenhouse gas emissions, which is kind of amazing when you think that it's a town of 70,000 people. The problem's so big, it's so massive, it affects so many different people, environmentally and socially. We basically tried to cover the story from as many angles as we could, and we realized that it was inexhaustible. We met the chief of the Athabascan region First Nation. We met the premier of Alberta, which is like the governor. We also visited the work camps, saw the pipeline that's being built all the way to Chicago. We saw how they rip up the forest in order to discover and explore for this oil. We also snuck onto some of these sites. And the snow is really fucking deep here. Whoa. Be careful. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is it. Welcome to Alberta. Welcome to the future of oil. It sucks. It really fucking sucks. And it reeks. It smells. So we came all the way from New York because we heard there's a lot of oil here. I guess the other angle is scraping at the bottom of the barrel. It is the dirtiest to produce oil in the world. The oil sands industry in Canada make up the single largest contributor to our growing greenhouse gas emissions in Canada. The first thing you need to understand is how they extract the oil from the sand. First, they clear out the trees and mine the sand that's close to the surface. But some of the sand is deeper, and to get to that, they've invented a new system. It's called SAG-D, or steam-assisted gravity drainage. Basically, they heat the soil and suck out the sand. The, uh, the use of water for in situ uh, operations is a real concern. Companies use about a, a fifth of a barrel of water for every barrel of uh, oil produced in situ operations. 
oil sands companies, oil sands mines, basically take water, extract water directly from the Athabasca River. Because the process, of course, pollutes that water so much, it's largely not, not actually returned to the Athabasca River. The vast majority of it gets dumped into uh, these tailings ponds. So these are, you know, basically oily, oily lagoons full of, uh, full of wastewater and uh, suspended hydrocarbons. If you ever get a chance to tour an oil sands uh, mine, I mean, these, uh, th these landscapes are quite surreal. Once they've dug up all the oil sand, they stick it in these huge cokers, which are like large furnaces, and boil it and steam inject it. That's how they get the oil out of the sand. And this is the process where all the greenhouse gas emissions come from. Really, the only real, the only real way to get the, the oil sands to eliminate their carbon dioxide emissions is to stop producing the oil from the oil sands. Is, and is that your position? Um, I, I, we need to slow down. I, but I also recognize that it's not going to stop tomorrow. Um, we, our communities can't keep pace, our environment can't keep pace. You know, we need to slow down. I think that, that that in itself is very clear. And who's pressuring us to ramp up? Industry, government. <laughs> I mean, the Alberta government makes a lot of money on the oil sands. So until there's a viable alternative for them to shift their economy, um, they're, I, I think that they're going to continue to create the climate that's going to attract this kind of business to the province. It's kind of, we, we asked for, we went to go ask for permission, but there was no one in the office, so. And there are a couple of trees here. A couple of rows of a couple of trees. One, two, three, four, seven, nine, ten, a million. Logs, logs, log, 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 logs. It's dangerous being a logger. But we don't know how they cut them. If they're chainsaws or if they're those tree snipper things where they just snip it. Then again, what do I know? Boreal forests are the lungs of Canada. I mean, it's, it's what cleans our air. It's what gives us the air that, that we can breathe. If you compare it to like the Amazon forest, which is often called the lungs of the earth, the boreal forest is, is largely the lungs of, of North America, and so it's the largest intact it. forest left in the world. Holy shit, look at that thing. What, what are the odds of there being oil here? Oh, very good. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we're doing it. <laughs> what? So they just, they cut, 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 cut their grids, and That's then right. another crew comes in. You, you consider yourself an environmentalist of Definitely. sorts? Yeah. Oh yeah, you betcha. So you have um, no major concerns with um, the way this business is operating? Well, in? before we can even cut down a tree, we have to get government approval. One of the major focuses in this industry is, is on the environment because that's a key, key asset to what we do out here. Do you, do you think then these lines that have been mulched will get replanted or what? Well, happens? someday I'm sure that there's always tree planting that's going on uh, throughout, uh, throughout the province, you know. They just, they just have to catch up to the other guys. But when it is here, will be no more oil. What happens when there's no more oil? I don't know, I'd be dead by then and I won't care. Are you going to work in this business until you retire? I thought I knew too what to do. I started surveying in 1974. I like the wood, I like to be outside. Then, at my age, kind of my age, I'm not that old, guys, uh, but, you know, to try to learn something else. And that's not me, I like to be in the bush and, and it takes lots of sweat and there's long hours and everything, but uh, that's what we do. We the grunt, we the white nigger of North America. Can you tell us how much you make? How much I make? Yeah. I make ten thousand dollars a month. This thing is oil. <laughs> the new oil. This thing got oil. Everything's got oil. Even your camera inside got oil. It's Everything. like the, the economic engine of Canada, this town. It is. Alberta is debt-free and uh, 
I can, Canada can support himself and he, everybody from Canada, especially from Maritime, if you want if you want some work, just do work back east and stuff. You come here, you go work. That we're gonna leave the truck there. Okay, we're gonna go straight. Yeah. Okay. Going. But I give you a clipboard and you can write your comments. Oh, stuff. good, good. Uh. Great. We're going there. Stranded men working here on the pipeline down there, but uh, it's the sector 32. We want to go down to sector. Hey, how's it going, how's it going buddy? Not bad, not bad. Hey. AC, they call me yeah. JC all JC. around here. <laughs> yeah. I don't like being called after toilet because that's what they call a toilet to John, right? You're so, right. JC. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That chainsaw kicked back. And kind of buggered me up a little bit back a few years ago. Yeah, well, you're lucky it didn't do anything yeah. worse. I keep the sunglasses down, though. Yeah. I hide that stuff. Because the ladies don't like to see that stuff. So you, you, you like your job? Oh, I love it. You you like trees? And I'm out here, fresh air, nice blue skies. Life's great. Lots of wildlife. Well, I hadn't seen anything yet, but you don't have to touch anything. But they're nice trees. Yeah, exactly. I hate to cut them down if they don't have to go. Eh? Like it's, that's our oxygen, man. <laughs> you know. I hate to cut them out because uh, it's not that I'm a tree hugger, but I'm not a tree killer either. Wow, that's really good. Okay. You did a good job, buddy. You were really delicate with that thing. You did, like, you slowly, you know, you steered it into a direction. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great fun. Do you like Fort McMurray? No. Why? <laughs> There's too many people and too big of a rush up here. Yeah. Too many, I don't know. Like this highway, they call it Death Highway. It scares you to drive on it. You don't know if somebody's going to clean you or wipe you out or what. So <laughs> you keep close to the ditch, right? <laughs> what happens to people? They just like, do they work too hard and then party too hard and then the combination gets them into trouble or what? Uh, it could be. It could be. Because a lot of people that do long shifts, eh? Like, us, we usually take our days off after 21 or less. You work 21 days straight. 21 days straight, yeah. Then take five, six days off to enjoy life a little bit. But some of these other guys, well, they get going 30, 40, 50 days straight, and then that's gotta be that's yeah, just they not get, healthy. They no, go they get burned squirting. out and they get tired, and it's a way of life. But it's 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 interesting at times. Wouldn't do anything else otherwise. Never had a choice, right? What's your plan then? Stay here for another couple of years, or you wanna? Yeah, float the oil patch through anyway. Like, what does that mean, float the oil patch through? Well, as long as there's money here, a man will be here working. If he can fill his bank account up, put the bread and butter on the table, and this is where he'll be. If it ain't here, if it's in BC, or if it's in Sweden. If that's where the money is, that's where we'll all have to go, right? Right. You have a family? Yeah, I got, I got a son. Yeah. Right. It's Here in uh, Alberta? In the Maritimes. In the Maritimes. Yeah. Yeah, he'll be there. Yeah. So you're not going back home. You're here for... for I'm good. here. I'm here for... The, as long as the money's here, I'm here. As long here. as the oil's flowing, you're... Yeah, you're exactly, here. right? Like, the welfare line's not for me. Right, right on. <laughs> George Bush's State of the Union address a couple of years ago. He, you know, last year, right? Yeah, pretty, pretty bl bluntly said, you know, we're we're addicted to foreign oil and we need to get off foreign oil. And he didn't consider, I don't think he considers Canada foreign in that uh, in that perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming this afternoon. And and first and uh, foremost, I want to welcome back uh, to Fort McMurray our Premier uh, Ed Stalmack. Premier, welcome back to uh, Fort McMurray. Over the past uh, year, I've spoken to a lot of uh, ordinary Albertans. They are proud of Alberta's position in Canada as, e as an economic uh, powerhouse. However, there is always a word of caution, and that is, uh, Ed, don't blow it. 
This is the new premier, Ed Stalmack. He took over from this guy, Ralph Klein. And he's the guy responsible for kickstarting the oil sands in the 90s. While you were premier, were you pressured by multinationals no. to increase production? No, never. Uh, ten years ago, I took a delegation down to Houston. And I can recall uh, holding a symposium to talk about the oil sands and how uh, Canada can meet the reliable and secure supply that the U.S. Stable. is looking for, the stable supply. Uh, first of all, we stationed a person in uh, Washington, D.C. to uh, focus really on the American legislators, those in Congress and, and in uh, Senate. And his working, his work is uh, having His results. work is, uh, well, his work has been highly successful. We've created the um, the most accessible investment climate for oil companies. I Why? mean, heck, mean? they because we wanted the investment. We wanted people to come in. So in the 90s, we set up a royalty regime that allowed them to virtually not pay royalties. Right. Majority of the oil sands, once it's upgraded and refined, and often before it's upgraded and refined, it is shipped to the states. Um, the Chicago area is one of the um, is one of the. Um, hubs. Send hubs for the bitumen upgrading. This pipe goes all the way to Chicago, which is far. We're good for 50 years, America. After that, you're fucked. You're on your own. Uh, the tar sands is producing about a million barrels of oil a day, and there are you know discussions to increase that to five million right. barrels a day. America, of course, uses more than uh, 20 million barrels of oil a day. So, I mean, the tar sands can plug that gap for only a very short period, and it's never going to be able to meet uh, Americans' needs. So we need to look at other solutions. When you're in government, uh, there's a lot of pressure to, to be open and friendly to industrial development, and, and Klein was the, was the best of the best of them. Um, and what we're seeing now is some of those leaders going, whoa, maybe we did this a little bit too fast. Okay, well, obviously there's been no plan. It's why it spiraled out of control. Our communities have spiraled out of control. Development spiraled out of control. Klein came out after he left office saying, well, no, we didn't have a plan. We just said, come on in. People have said that you have said that you didn't have a plan for the development of the oil sands. No, is that true we, or we, is that we, misquoting we, you? Know, no, um, we had a plan for sustainable growth. We had a plan for uh, $50 a barrel oil and, uh, you know, gas at uh, six or seven, or six fifty a gigajoule. But we didn't have a plan for unprecedented growth. No one has a plan. Not even the current premier or the current cabinet has a plan for unprecedented growth. Nor does Al Gore have a plan, by the way. Right. You know, and you're asking for a personal opinion and yeah. uh, I can offer a personal opinion. I say let the markets prevail.